Welcome to the guide, Exile. As promised in my last Juggernaut build video, I had plans for another one. One that would be a very tanky boy. This is of course not the thick Jug rework, but perhaps maybe a successor to him if he had an extreme budget. I wanted to explore how much more tanky we could make the Juggernaut Ascendancy while still having the damage to be able to push all the content in the game, including delving deep into the mines. And I would like to think that I was fairly successful with this dual tentacle wielding Juggernaut that exploits the offensive and defensive mechanics of the Elder's Nebulok Nightmare Maces. The Nebuloks are a serious powerhouse for not only damage, but extreme damage mitigation when dual wielding and paired with more than 7 endurance charges. However, they come with the downside of taking flat fire damage over time when you get hit. Luckily, this damage over time was reduced by 50% from 400 per endurance charge to 200 per endurance charge in patch 3.4, making it really easy to manage. And truly, these weapons pair so well with the Juggernaut, as he not only gets an additional endurance charge, but he has very strong methods for generating and maintaining endurance charges. So with that, we are able to easily dual wield Nebulox on the Juggernaut after getting a little bit of maximum fire resistance, life regeneration, and some itemization. Speaking of life regeneration, we can also use the new Consecrated Path skill. This is a new skill introduced in patch 3.4, and it ultimately works like a controllable flicker strike. You can either ground target the skill to stay in place, or hover your mouse over nearby enemies to teleport to them, thus allowing you to choose when to move or not. It is incredibly fun to use and provides a few key features and utilities to this build. It can teleport us to nearby enemies, removing the need to use a separate movement skill in most scenarios, and let us chain through packs disregarding any movement speed. It generates consecrated ground under our feet when we perform a teleporting attack for an extra 6% life regeneration whilst we stand in it. It hits so hard that we can actually stun enemies without any stun investment. This means we're not only getting more life regeneration, but mobility and defensiveness all in one package. So with the core ideas of this build slammed into place, let's talk more about putting it all together. So I will not lie that the current gearing and setup of my character is very expensive. I wanted to try and min-max the idea, and I could still go further if I get the right items. So this is most definitely not a league starter. However, that is not to say what I have is unachievable, or could not be done in other approaches. Like all my other builds, you can certainly start out on a budget and work into the items shown here. The main items that you will have to get, of course, are the Nebulox. So let's take a closer look at the offensive and defensive roundup of these items with this iteration of the build using 10 endurance charges. Offensively, we get 80% of physical attack damage gained as fire damage, 100 to 160 flat damage range, 80 chaos resistance, 20% reduced elemental damage taken from hits, which is ultimately like an elemental fortify, and 5,000 base armor. And now the negatives of it is that we take 4,000 raw fire damage per second when hit for 4 seconds. That is an insane start to our offense and defense at a somewhat frightening opportunity cost. However, when we reduce the fire damage over time using an 80 maximum fire resistance and damage reduction from Juggernaut and Pantheons, the fire damage over time is now reduced to 600 fire damage per second. This is quite easy to combat via the percentage life regen that we get from the passive tree, itemization, and skill choice. Of course, since we're using two Nebulox, we are limited to skills that can be used with maces. As talked about in the introduction, the new Consecrated Path is an excellent all-around choice for doing most all of the content in the game. I was able to take it all the way through Red Tier Elder, Shaper's Guardians, and Shaper himself. I would, however, recommend making a single gem swap to Molten Strike for doing endgame bosses, and especially Uber Elder since the damage is just so much greater and you do not need to worry about accidentally flickering around the target. I will include trees for both Pure Consecrated Path and Hybrid Consecrated Path with Molten Strike. Beyond the main weapons and skills, we grab Elemental Overload with Avatar of Fire, from the tree or from Azoth's Blood, to get elemental damage scaling and fully convert Consecrated Path. This also allows us to make full use of Fire and Elemental Penetration. We also have Herald of Ash for extra damage and clearing effectiveness. Defensively is where this build really shines. We're the Juggernaut with two Nebulox and get very effective damage reductions. First, let's look at the Elemental and Chaos reductions. At 10 Endurance Charges, the Nebulox get an effective Elemental Fortify equivalent, Along with an insane amount of Chaos Resistance, paired with the Juggernaut's Unrelenting node, we get a total of 120 Chaos Resistance, which will cap our Chaos Resistance, and 28% reduced elemental damage taken from hits. Pair this with Fortify, gained from a movement skill or weapon implicit corruption, which I do have, we have our elemental damage reduction all the way to 48% reduced from hits. Unbreakable gives us another 5% generic reduced damage taken to get to 53% reduced, and finally, we can go even a step further by using a Wise Oak with Balanced Resistances for yet another 10% reduced elemental damage to get you to a total of 63% reduced elemental damage taken. 
Making use of Valor Weave with 80% maximum resistances, this will reduce all incoming elemental damage hits to 7% of their original value, and damage over time sources to 15% of their original value. This is akin to having 93% maximum resistances for hits, and 85% for dots. And of course, for physical reductions, it is really no problem. With armor, 10 endurance charges, and generic reductions, we are basically untouchable. We can also use a cast one damage taken, a mortal call, or a self-cast immortal call for incredibly long physical immunity, but are able to easily tank shaper slams without it. Finally, we have a blasphemy and feeble to further reduce incoming damage, 20% life regeneration, not including the consecrated ground, and of course life leech to maintain our life pool when we do ever take some damage. For playstyle, you will be able to turn on Blood Rage and effectively flicker through maps with Consecrated Path. I was able to have a weapon swap with a main hand Brightbeak and an offhand Nebulok for slamming through every tier of map quite quickly, even tier 16s because of all the extra damage from the Nebulok. For Delves, we are incredibly effective being able to absorb all hits that come at us and move through the small passageways with Consecrated Path. Unfortunately, due to the time and sulfite cost changes that have been going on, I have only been able to really push up to Delve Depth of 300. However, this build should most definitely be able to push as far as you would like, as some of the top players on the boards right now are pushing with similar builds to this. As talked about before, for endgame bosses like Shaper and Uber Elder, Consecrated Path in this setup can feel quite lackluster. It is certainly doable on some, but slow. So I decided to cave and work in Molten Strike to the build. I only have to swap Molten Strike and Concentrated Effect for this, and am able to still smash through maps with Consecrated Path. As you can see in most of these endgame fights and clips, I'm able to face tank everything and don't even need flasks to complete these fights. Another hot tip for the juggernauts that I forgot to mention in my last video and that was pointed out in the comments is that you can use the gluttony belt to force hits on yourself when you leap slam to trigger unflinching. This will fill your endurance charges almost instantly, and I like to use this belt before instanced bosses such as Elder Guardians, Elder, Shaper, or Uber Elder as you will not have endurance charges entering those. The Path of Build and Pace bin is included within the written script and description. We are the Juggernaut, baby. As most of you already know, this is a great class for not only defense, but offensive utility. Undeniable is a powerhouse for attack speed and accuracy so that we can always hit and always trigger our elemental overload. Unbreakable gives us a valuable generic 5% damage reduction along with conditional life regeneration. Unflinching is an extra Endurance Charge and Endurance Charge Generator. Unrelenting gives us a huge amount of mitigation and pushes our elemental reduction even further. For progression, I would follow this order. Here's the final passive tree that makes use of Consecrated Path and Molten Strike. We ensure to get Elemental Overload and Point Blank Keystones. Of course, Point Blank is only vital for Molten Strike. I will include another tree for people who do not wish to use Molten Strike at all, and of course if you do not have Zoth's Blood. Ultimately we do not get too many damage nodes in the tree as we focus more on life, endurance charges, and travel, while we get damage from the Nebulox and gear. For major pantheons, I chose to use Soul of Arakali. This is a very powerful pantheon for the build since it grants us damage over time reduction, reduced shock effect, and extra chaos resistance to damage over time if we are ever not capped. It also gives us a 50% multiplier to our life recovery rate if we trigger Immortal Call whilst Blood Rage is on, or when the dot from Nebulok ends. For miners, I chose Soul of Shikari. This is a great miner for further reducing chaos damage over time from Caustic Clouds and avoiding the poison ailment. Of course you can swap these around depending on situations. Here we make use of Consecrated Path for mapping and Molten Strike for serious endgame bosses. You can also just swap Area of Effect for Concentrated Effect on Consecrated Path for doing all other bosses. You can also swap Endurance Charge on Melee Stun with damage on full life if you feel like you can be on full life reliably. I just found the consistent 40% more damage from Endurance Charge on Melee Stun with the 10 Endurance Charges plus the extra stun chance to be more enticing. If you do manage to get Fortify on melee hit as a weapon corruption, then you can drop Fortify and put in a quality culling strike for quicker kills and attack speed. I swap Warchief for Protector when farming endgame bosses as it scales the entirety of Molten Strike. Combustion's minus fire res is a global debuff so our Ancestral Totem will ignite the targets and apply that for another multiplier to our damage.
For this build, you can certainly start on rare items and work to get the itemization you need, much like a generic Molten Strike Juggernaut, but using Consecrated Path. The first items you will want to snag are, of course, the Nebulox. For our helmet, we are looking at a rare, as we need a lot of life and resistances on this bad boy. We have a lot of unique itemization in this build, so getting the resistance where we can is very important. You could also look for or try and craft a nice fossil helmet with the minus 9 fire resistance to nearby enemies. For the body, a lore weave is our best in slot to get our maximum resistances all the way up to 80 without having to run purities, flasks, or other special items. It also gives us flat physical damage, elemental damage with attacks, and critical strike chance for our elemental overload. If you cannot get this chest, you can always look at some strong rare elder chests or uniques such as Belly of the Beast in the interim. Tomb Fist, as always, for the gloves. Increased attack speed, life, a jewel socket, and intimidate is always welcomed. You could also use a nice pair of rare gloves, and maybe even insanity crafted gloves for a faster leap slam. Combs roots are ultimately what I settled on. I was using death doors originally, but I found that I really wanted to have the stun, slow, and freeze immunity that I lost dropping unstoppable. We do lose on some gem sockets, but gain a massive amount of life, and if you can get it, an extra endurance charge on the implicit. You can use rares in this slot, but I highly recommend getting Combs Roots even without the extra endurance charge as soon as you can, as they really ground the tank build and playstyle. Like with the helmet, we want to try and get life and resistances on our belt, and damage if we can. A Stygian is always a good choice and lets us socket another jewel for more damage, life, or utility. Oh man, this is the most expensive item of the build for sure, Azoth's Blood. Of course you can forgo this item and get Avatar Fire in the tree. It really just saves us on some points as well as granting more damage. You can certainly look for a nice rare amulet with life, elemental damage, or percentage of physical damage gained as fire damage from elder bases. Like with the amulet, these combsway rings can be quite expensive. You can certainly get the build going without them, but they do add a lot of power. As always, these can be replaced in the interim by offensive steel or opal rings, or even well-rolled elder rings for generic melee damage multipliers. You could also use comb signs rings, as they do add an endurance charge, but unfortunately, they do not make up for the extra degen that they provide and can make the build edge into negative regeneration. Well, no question about these. We are using the Nebulok mazes as reasoned and explained before. These are absolute powerhouse weapons for a build that can stack endurance charges. I was lucky to hit the percentage chance to gain Fortify on melee hit corruption on my first Nebulok. It's a great corruption for this build to keep 100% up time on Fortify by just holding down right click and going through monsters. Flasks for this build are quite simple, but are also kind of complicated at the same time. The most important one here is the Wise Oak. This flask is the most powerful when we have our elemental resistances balanced, so we get all of the benefits on each element. I recommend doing this if you're planning on pushing the hardest content for the extra reduction. I was able to balance my resistances through jewels. The first time was excruciating. It took me an hour or two with help from my Twitch stream, and the second time when respecting the tree a bit, it took me like five minutes. If you can't balance your resistances, just make sure that fire is the highest of all of them. A Lion's Roar. This is a great defensive and offensive flask for Consecrated Path. It really is no use for Molten Strike, so you could replace this with a better utility flask when using that at endgame. I only bothered replacing this for fights with something like Uber Elder. Silver Flask. This gives us a much needed attack and speed bonus. Sulfur Flask. We already have Consecrated Ground for the most part, but the generic damage multiplier it gives is quite the boost since we have so little increased damage on the build. And finally, just a Life Flask. This should have increased recovery rate or instant recovery on it for dire situations. A Blood of the Karui could also be used, but I wanted another ailment removal. I will show example jewels used in the build within the video, and leave the affix priority within the written guide. We use two unique jewels in the tree, Wildfire Jewels, to increase our Molten Strike ball production. These can be placed at any of the jewel sockets aside from the top right intelligence one. If you choose to not use Molten Strike at all, then you don't need these and can replace them with the upcoming rare jewels. As stated in the gearing, I filled out a lot of my resistance and attack modifiers on jewels, and was able to balance my wise oak through them. You'll basically want to be looking for at least one attack modifier and then some resistances. For abyss jewels, it is much of the same. Fill out whatever resistances you are missing, grab some life if you can, and if not, other utilities such as increased critical strike chance is very valued. Well, another big boy jug to be added to the books. I really think that I, I may have a problem always making these thick boys that seem to get these hot balls worked in every time they can. I might have to see a, a specialist about it? Yeah, no matter. I had a lot of fun with this character, and that's all that matters, right? 
It is really my new favorite endgame farming character as we just don't have to worry about hits that come our way and we can take on pretty much any content. It sure is expensive but totally worth it being able to stroll into any guardian map or boss encounter. Now to get to slamming some deep delves. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, Exile.